all may be seated. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you today to introduce a brother of mine. Um, if you've watched any of our digital stuff, that was the first time that I met him. He, he kind of messaged me on Facebook and said, I, I'm sorry, but I stole one of your files, your new logo. I swiped it off, inter off the internet and I made a couple of intros for you. So anything that you see online, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss all the school age kids. I forgot to do that. Kindergarten to sixth grade, go ahead with Miss Charlene. And everybody else say goodbye to Miss Charlene. This will probably be the last time that we see Miss Charlene. I'm just playing. She's, she's overwhelmed with kids right now. <laughs> they said that there's not a spot to, to stand in their basement. They've got kids everywhere in their basement. See, they, they, are, they have their whole family in town. And when I say whole family, they got family from Texas and Michigan and South Africa. And man, they've got kids from Texas and Michigan and South Africa. And I see some really big old smiles on moms and dads right now that they don't have their kids with them. It's like, oh, cool, quietness. But back to my story of Brother Ronald, he, he, stole a, he stole our logo. He said, I made a couple of things for you. Like, gee, you don't have to steal it. I'll send you the raw file. <laughs> um, he's got a lot of talents, a lot of talents that may be unseen. Um, but I've come to love this brother of mine, and uh, he, he's part of the family of God. And it's, it's weird how Nazarenes work. I've, I've been in these situations many times where you just oh, hug a neck because you know that they're part of the family of God. And God, you know, he, God just, he links you there. Um, so it is my honor, my privilege to introduce you, Reverend Ronald Miller from the, one of the many four different nations of South Africa. I think he lives in South Africa, but he, he, he looks over quite a few more. It is our, my pleasure to introduce Reverend Ronald Miller. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, as Pastor introduced Ron, I'm his wife, Shelly. <laughs> I know a lot of you. Obviously, we've been in and out of Washington for quite a few years now. Um, but uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, because you guys have traveled with us for a long time in our missionary uh, journey, but there's also new faces here. So just to give you a, a little bit of a background on our uh, what we do as missionaries and what our current assignment is, um, we, we do, as Pastor said, we do, we live in Johannesburg, South Africa, and um, our work uh, has us overseeing the six countries that sit at the bottom of the African continent. So the six countries at the bottom of the African continent are Namibia, Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, which they now call Eswatini, South Africa, and the island of Madagascar. Now you guys will remember from a several years ago. We did live in Madagascar for a time as well, for about five years. So those are the countries that we work in on the Africa South field. And just to give you a little, um, some of the statistics of, of Southern Africa. First of all, the Church of the Nazarene has 98,000 members in the Church of the Nazarene in Southern Africa, and that's in those six countries. And we have 990 churches that are also in those six countries. And that also is 25 districts. You know, the Church of the Nazarene were divided into different districts. And um, this is the Africa Southfield, and the 25 districts of the Africa Southfield have these 98,000 members. Also, we have two educational institutions on the Africa Southfield. That's Nazarene Theological College, which is where Ronald um, studied uh, his theology degree, and also Southern Africa Nazarene University, which is in Manzini in Eswatini in Swaziland. So uh, these are two of our educational institutions. You know, here in the United States, we have Nazarene universities as well. Some of you uh, know Olivet, um, Mount Vernon Nazarene, all of these different. Um, so our two uh, educational institutions in Southern Africa, they're part of that educational family in the Church of the Nazarene. And um, in these six countries in Southern Africa, there are over 85 million people. So you can see our potential for growth in Southern Africa is still vast and still huge um, for the Church of the Nazarene. Just to let you know a little bit about what we do as, as the missionaries in Southern Africa on the South Field, 
Ronald is the field administrator, and that basically means that he wears a lot of different hats um, uh, throughout his work. He is a part of the strategic communications team for the field. Well, he is the strategic communications team for the field. <laughs> so that's that stuff like when he helps Pastor with the logo. It involves uh, a lot of audiovisual things, but also getting out information to our districts and to our local pastors. Um, whether that is using email or we have a messaging app that the whole world loves, except for America, called WhatsApp. And um, we send messages on that as well. Um, he also does project management, work and witness. This is, we are the new work and witness coordinators for Southern Africa. So if you guys want to get Southwest Indiana to do a, a team, we, you can talk to us and we will we'll help you out. And also MCARE. MCARE is where we have um, our, um, our personal care for missionaries and missionary families. And so he's part of that team that um, helps with the spiritual and emotional needs of the missionaries on the Africa South field. And um, I, some of my responsibilities, I also have a lot of little different things that I do that uh, adds into one big thing. Um, I am our field personnel coordinator, but I also work with our regional personnel coordinator. That means I work with the lady that works with all the missionaries in Africa. And uh, part of that is helping with uh, education for missionary kids. Um, every missionary kid on the continent has to attend school, just like everyone here does. And, um, and there's no free education in, in Africa. All education costs money. So um, part of that is, is helping with getting those funds where they need to go. And I also uh, help on the regional communications team. That means anything that you would see on the Africa region website or any of the publications that go out, um, I, there's certain aspects of that that I also help with. So these are the many, many different hats that we wear as um, Africa Southfield missionaries. Now, on the Africa Southfield, we have a, a motto that we, um, that we have, and it is called Bridging the Gap. And uh, the reason that the Africa Southfield has this motto is because um, there are lots of gaps that exist within the church and within society in Southern Africa. I'm sure you see them here in America, too. And the church, it's very important for the church to be that bridge to, that we can help to bridge those gaps. So in Southern Africa, we have a history of, of apartheid. Apartheid was our form of government that divided people according to their races. And that created a lot of gaps in the church, a lot of, of, um, uh, of, of divisions within the church because people were divided along uh, language lines, along racial lines, and along cultural lines. And so the church exists to bridge those gaps. But also, uh, there's, there's sometimes gaps in communication, getting the information out to the local churches. So the Africa Southfield wants to bridge that gap to help uh, get the communication out and, and to, uh, to do training and to help our leaders to become better leaders and to, um, uh, and to reach their full potential uh, in, in Christ. And so the Africa Southfield exists to bridge those gaps uh, that do exist within the family of God at times. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. It is always a pleasure and a privilege for us to be home. I think uh, we see this as a second home. And so thank you, pa thank you, Pastor Daryl. I call him Pastor D. I don't know why, but he sounds much cooler, isn't it? I like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm very impressed with what he does. Uh, he's a community developer. Uh, he's out on the streets. Uh, and we, we share actually a lot of, lot of things. We have a lot of things in common. Yeah. Um, we're both good looking. Amen. Amen. Preach, brother. Just the wives, yeah. Amen. The wives, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and uh, I, I, I love his passion for, for outreach. And I love his passion for meat. And that's also another thing that we, we have in common. And uh, we both have good looking wives. That's, Amen. Uh, brownie points, eh? Brownie points. Um, I'll pay you later. <laughs> I want to go into just, you know, I was supposed to share the word of God this morning. I'm going to do that in our presentation this morning. And uh, I don't know, I saw you say amen a lot on the on social media so 
I'm hoping that you're going to do that this morning as well. Say amen. 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 Sure. Uh, Nikki, I did see the typo, by the way. Nikki told me, and we were in um, at her church, and she said, there's a typo. Did you see the typo? J just go. Did you see the typo? No, I did not. We exposed it. If you go to back, yeah. It says, just go back again, yeah, sorry. Intro, introducting. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Imagine the second uh, English person picking it up. Thank you, Nikki. Is that what you were saying? Thank you, Nikki. So I'll leave it there for Nikki and Joe. <laughs> All right, if we can go back yeah, to that one. I want to introduce, you know, my... my um, I don't know if it's my watchword and song, which is all our watchword and songs, is to make Christ-like disciples in the nations. Yes. That is what we are about, isn't it? Is to, to introduce someone to Christ. I don't know how much you have just a lot of pressure in, in saying that we have to lead someone to Christ. Yeah, we do. But our, our main thing is to make Christ-like disciples in the nation. Yes. Uh, I read a book, and Shalim myself read a book many, many years ago, I think pre-COVID, and the title of the book is Making Christ-Like Disciples One Conversation at a Time. Uh, we don't have to all be loud like your pastor, you know, in preaching. Uh, we can make, make Christ-like disciples, you know, at our workplace just by connecting. And I've, I've got this picture up here because it kind of symbolizes for me what this is all about. Uh, I was in Botswana. Uh, in Botswana is a country, one of our countries on our field. And I was, uh, I was serving as the district superintendent for about three years. And I started working. I like to walk around the markets and get to know people. Uh, I got to, to witness, by the way, to a Muslim lady through coaching. Uh, one of the things that we do, I do coaching. And I started coaching a Muslim lady. Can you believe that? But in Madagascar, I walked around in the in the market, marketplace, and I saw this, and this is pre-COVID, and I saw this, uh, this little girl, Neo, and she had her shoes on the wrong feet. And without even thinking, I stopped, and I knelt down. Now, this, this is not Photoshop, by the way. It is not staged. It is somebody who took a picture. I did not even expect that. But I, I bent down, and I put Neo's shoes on the right feet. On the right feet and and after that when I saw this picture I thought but this is exactly what we are about is to put how people to put their shoes on the right feet um, and you know this girl did not know you, you can see she's holding on to my arm because like a little bit scared I'm not sure what I'm doing but I think for many people in the world they don't even know that they lost and so it's our duty our, I think our, our mandate is to how people put their shoes, and this is not just uh, not the shoes that we wear, but the <coughs> spiritual shoes on the right feet. That's, that sounds right for me. Go to the next slide, and, and for me, this is huge. I don't know how many of you remember 2020. How many of you do not want to remember 2020? Amen. Right? Amen. This is a lot of stuff happening in 2020 that I want to forget. Uh, the mask, uh, we actually just a few weeks ago, South Africa, let go of the mask mandate and so there's no more mask in South Africa she was right because everywhere you went you had to be wearing a mask um, I was amazed when I came into into the US right in the beginning of June and I went into Walmart uh, and I went into the into churches and I saw nobody wearing a mask for us that was kind of the the <laughs> the, the fashion statement, you know, wearing masks. And guys came up with nice masks, by the way. It's like, I don't know if they did here, but some guys came out with beautiful masks. So it was a fashion statement. COVID-19 also brought to us a lot of social, I mean, technical abilities. And I, I always say this, pastors then became social media gurus. Suddenly we're speaking about Mevo and, and logos and passes. That, that is what he started to do. And Zoom meetings. How many of you love Zoom meetings? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a no-no. 
Uh, I always joke around that, you know, when, uh, and Shelly knows this, when I did Zoom meetings, on top here, I'm well dressed. I got my tie, I'm well dressed. Down below, just leave it in the valley. I mean, that's, that's uh, there was other stuff that, uh, is that sound familiar? Um, and, and one of the things that happened is that it was the closure of the church. In South Africa, everything was closed. In fact, it became almost like a militant state in South Africa because the army was on the, you know, on the roads, on the streets. They were kicking people who left their houses. You could not leave your house unless you went for something essential, like going to the grocery store, or going to the, the doctor. If they found you outside, man, it's, uh, you could get uh, thrown into prison. And so churches closed. And, and schools closed. Everything was now done on, online. And online learning, we actually love that, isn't it? Shelley love that. She didn't. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You know, in a, in a time of COVID where things are closed and, and churches are closed, you expect nothing to happen. But I, I want to tell you this one thing. That there is never a time, and I want to stand a little bit further to the front, that there's never a time that the, the, the work of God stops going on. Amen. Yet here's our God. And He is a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Why do I say that? If we go to the next slide. Um, you know, I went to Arkansas. Arkansas is, is hot, man. It's hot. I became, <laughs> I don't know if I, a dark man become, can become darker, but I saw a picture of myself in Washington that my, my wife posted. You just see this black dot, so I know that I tan further. Uh, I, I joke about my color because it's not important to me. Um, so I went to Arkansas and uh, I went to this place called Wicks, Arkansas. I don't know how many of you know Wicks, Arkansas. Outside of the church, there was a rock. And something was written on this rock. And, you know, I, I like where theology and verses meet reality. When we speak about grace in the church and it's not meeting reality, there's a problem. Yes. And uh, there's a verse where, where Christ speaks to, to, to Peter and he says, On this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The, 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 the world tries to, to, um, uh, to get us off track. As a church, uh, the world tries to, 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 to have us focus on other things, but Christ continues his work. And when we see these numbers, I want to, I don't like statistics, but statistics is important. I pull out statistics for 20 and 2021. This is the peak of the COVID time. And in that time, I, I, this, is, this is a miracle. Because in that time, 8,683,000 people were ushered into the kingdom of God. That is, yeah, that is, that is an amen. amen. That yeah. is an amen. 4,738 baptisms. Those are not just people getting wet, by the way. Those are people who, we, when, 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 when we talk about baptism, we, we talk about the baptism of repentance. People turning away from their wicked ways. This is what happened... When it was meant for evil, God turned around and good came out of that. God, God loves creativity. I, if you ask me, Sir Ronald, how did 8,683 people get ushered into the kingdom of God? I've got no idea. I have to be honest with you. But I know that God gives us as pastors and as people of God, He gives us creativity to have people introduce someone to Christ. I want to tell you two stories to tell you about creativity. Um, there's a story that goes in Mozambique. I don't know how many of you know Mozambique. Mozambique for me is something that is in my mind because uh, Mozambique gave me malaria, by the way. But yeah, that's my gift from, from, from Mozambique. Thank you, Mozambique. <laughs> And uh, in the time of the flooding in Mozambique, the, the, the place of refuge was in a tree. So, uh, you know, flooding going on and uh, 
people got into the tree. The one pastor got into a tree. And you know what he, he started doing? Guess what? He started preaching in the tree. Um, and I cannot even imagine, I mean, you hear this voice coming out of a tree. And uh, started, people started listening. A few months after the peak of this flood, flooding, the, there's a man that came into a church and he said, Pastor, I want to talk to you. And the uh, pastor said, no, come talk to me. And he says, Pastor, I, I, uh, I know you don't know me. But there was a time that I heard you preach. And I was also in the tree listening to your preaching. And when you did the altar call, guess what happened? This man gave his life to Christ in the tree. That's tree ministry, right? Tree ministry. There's another story that is amazing to me. And it's a, it's a friend of ours. I told me the story and, and you know in our society we 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 are becoming very like more personal it's me myself and i isn't it that's the unholy trinity what i call it me myself and i and this man tells me that he moved into this this community and uh he needed i think he needed a shovel what do you call it here a shovel or a, a shovel yeah. I know you guys say bana banana, I say banana, That's, but it's the same thing, right? It's the thing that we eat. Uh, so he needed a shovel. And he thought, in the first thought in our individualistic uh, uh, society that we're living in is to go to the shop, get your shovel and start working. Guess what this guy did? Now we are talking about making Christ-like disciples in the nation, one conversation at a time. You know what he did? He went to his neighbor. How oh, we grew up like this, isn't it? When we, when we needed sugar, I don't know if you did it here. When we needed sugar, we go to the neighbor. But our society is changing to say, hey, let's go to Walmart. By the way, I'm still amazed at Walmart. The amount of options you guys have, it's, it's so amazing to me. I think Malachi took a picture. Is it someone took a picture of the amount of toothpaste that you have? Like rows and rows of toothpaste, like that's too much thinking here for one day. But um, he knocked on the door. He said, "Neighbor, I need to use your shovel. Or can you can you give me your shovel to use?" These guys are still friends, and the neighbor is a Muslim guy, making Christ-like disciples in the nation. I don't know how far that relationship is. But this is, I believe, what God is calling us to, to, to have a community kind of mindset. I like the story in the book of Matthew chapter 15 or 13. It's the story of the sower and the seed. How many of you know that story? The sower and the seed is, a, is a, an amazing story. And God, Jesus tells this parable of, about a farmer that starts sowing seed. And you know the story, the, the seed falls on different ground. On different parts, uh, you know, uh, some on, on rocky ground, uh, some on fertile ground, and different places. And when you when you break down that parable, it because the seed fell all over the place. It tells me this: that the sower did not mind where that seed went. You know, so why, why am I saying this? Sometimes we're in a church, or sometimes we're at a place where. We sow seeds sparingly. Yeah, I'm going to keep it for these people because I think this person is close to knowing Christ. Or this person is a leader, so I need to invest here. The parable shows that when we, when we sow, we sow not sparingly. But everybody, no matter who they are, and I'm glad this morning, by the grace of God, that somebody sowed the seed my way. And didn't look at me like, oh no, those guys from the from the wrong country, and he is too dark, or he's too tall, or he's too handsome. <laughs> but he gave it to me, and this is where I am today because somebody didn't sow sparingly; they sowed extravagant, extravagantly. Is that a word? Just, just open. I like, that's why I like what Pastor Darrell does. He does a lot of stuff. When we pray for him on a Tuesday, he's out on the streets. He's out on the Thursday. 
we went out on the Thursday a few weeks ago. And he's doing social media. He is making a noise. He's connecting to the community. That is what it's all about, I believe. And that is why I believe God is blessing your church. You go to the next slide. I know I was supposed to preach this morning. If I preach it, I'm going to be at all African time. Um, I want to tell you about this conference quickly, and I want to I want to tell you about my God. I I can brag about what's happening in our field, but I want to brag about God. You know why this is important? Because in the time of COVID, everybody is fear. There's a lot of fear. How many of you are, were very scared in the time of COVID? Like for me, I thought, you know, COVID is going to last for a week or two. And then when we started con continuing and continuing, and con I got scared, like, when is this going to stop? Friends of mine lost their lives in the time of COVID. I was scared. Um, here's something that happened in 2022 uh, that told me that, that God is at work. Uh, we had a leadership conference, in, as you can see the dates there. We invited all our leaders from our field. Now, I don't know how many of you know the abbreviations of the Nazarene Church. How many of you know the abbreviations? We an abbreviated church, isn't it? Isn't it? We, we like our abbreviations. NMI, NDI, um, NYI. NCM, yes, we, we like that. So we invited all these abbreviations to our leadership uh, uh, conference. And, you know, we expected that very few people would come. Um, because not only in a COVID time, but poverty and economic problems are hitting the world right now. When I see your gas prices, you are in the same boat. Uh, by the way, gas for us would be about $6 to the gallon. So if you think you got it bad, think again. Uh, I think I made mention when I was here last time that in, in Madagascar, people live, live of $1 per family per day. That, that's, that's, that's how our feel is. And so we, we sent out this invitation and we thought, well, a few people would respond to this. 170 leaders came. 170. He's a God, of course. If we go to the next few slides, this is our leadership. 170 leaders. That's not all of them, by the way. 170 leaders on our field. Go to the next slide. A lot of, a lot of what we were doing is what the world needs. It's prayer, isn't it? Um, I, I was privileged to be part of the prayer group on a, on a Tuesday and I want to echo the invitation from your pastor this is where you want to, to be on a Tuesday on your knees, by the way we fight our battles on our knees isn't it? Uh, we do uh, kneel, kneel not email ministry, knee mail ministry if you go to the next slide prayer and prayer and then I want to stop at the next slide yeah so I think you know the guy on the suit on this side, but the two I want to introduce you to. The middle guy, his name is Pastor Patrice. Uh, he is the district superintendent of uh, the district in Madagascar. Good friend of mine. On the right, on the far right, you have Pastor Lantu. She's our evangelism coordinator for our field. Oh, sorry, for Madagascar. One of the things that we did, and if you go to the next slide, you will see that um, is people praying and preaching out in the open. So that is actually taken at a prison where Pastor Patrice is ministering. If you go to the next slide, one of the things that we taught people in Madagascar is how to go out in the open and preach out in the open. Uh, doing mimes and doing dramas. If you go on, two more slides. Yep. Beautiful. Two things that happened at this conference to tell me that God is at work. Pastor Lantu, she, um, she ministers at a prison. I want to give you this number again. If you go to the next slide, Pastor B. Yeah. The church of God is moving on. Again, a statistic. 
in the prison ministry. I want you to, I don't know how many of you are seeing that number. 262 people were converted and baptized. Let me not say this. Let me say this. It's not people. It's inmates. People in the prison coming to know Christ, being baptized, being ushered into the kingdom of God. That is hope right there. It's, a, it's Coming to know Christ is, is our hope of glory, isn't it? It's our way to know for sure that whatever happens and in a time that we are in, in a time that we don't know what's going to happen next, we need to know Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Just, just think about those 262 inmates. They have reason to live. I think one of the things, one of the things that, that is cutting into our society is people do not have hope. People do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. And we know as Christians, the only way that we can have people know what's going to hold tomorrow is when they know Christ. Amen? When they know where they're going to land when they leave this earth. Uh, in that same time, if you go to just click again, in a span of two months, ten churches were planted. Ten churches were planted in a, in a span of two months. Is that God at work? Of course. My God reminds us over and over again that He is a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. That He continues irrespective of, you know, irrespective of what the world tells you. Irrespective of the sicknesses and the, the you know, we, we know about COVID-19 and we, we know about monkey, what's it, monkey pox, right? Monkey pox and, and chicken pox and monkey business and whatever, any sickness. He reminds us over and over and over again that his name is above every name. You know, we prayed, I know that we pray for, for many of the people in the church and the people outside of the church, your friends, your family. And I, I've got news for you. The, the names that medical professionals are giving to sicknesses. Uh, my father-in-law is a doctor. They have, when he speaks doctor stuff, I've got no idea what he says, but I'm polite. I say, yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> being nice. I've got no idea. But so many terminologies and this is the good news. That irrespective of what a medical professional gives to a sickness, and you can have it, but irrespective of a sickness, the name of Christ is above those names. Yes. Amen. Bring the names. But there's only one report that we will believe, isn't it? We will, report, we will believe in the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, at that same conference, uh, Pastor Patrice gets up, and I'm almost willing to close. Yeah, it's, it's, when you give a pastor a mic, how many of you know how many times your pastor says in conclusion? How many times does he, does he do that? Does he do that? Uh, you guys are just trying to say, you, he does, probably does it, isn't it? Every pastor does it in conclusion. But uh, at that same conference, there's two guys who got up. This guy. Um, Reverend Errol Kerum and Pastor Patrice, he gets up and Pastor Patrice says, you know, we've been doing all these things. We've been planting churches. 262 people came to know Christ, inmates, by the way, giving them hope. And Pastor Patrice says, by the way, I haven't been paid for four months. That's a disaster. Guys working. It hasn't been paid for, for four months. In the same time, uh, this Reverend Karam gets up, he says, we are at, we've got problems at NTC, Nazarene Theological College, because we've only got three students at our college. Our vision, and Shelley will close with this, our vision is to plant 300 churches in the next five years. That's a lot. Is it possible, by the way? Of course. Because we understand that all things are possible with Jesus Christ, isn't it? Amen. There's nothing impossible with him. And so, he, uh, Pastor Patrice gets up and uh, uh, Karen gets up. He says, there's no students. We, we, uh, well, we are three students, but we're struggling. And our FSC, Reverend Solomon and Glover, gets up after, he gets up after that. And he says, 
let's let's put our faith in God this afternoon. It's sometimes difficult, even for me. At times, I I I have to tell myself I'm a man of a he of little faith. Sometimes I'm supposed to believe. How many of you are like that? That I know I'm supposed to believe, but it's difficult. You know, for healing, it's difficult. I, I cannot because I've got all these ailments and I've got all these things. It's difficult. And then God comes and He does something to, to show us that He can be trusted. And uh, Reverend Solomon and Glotho, he says, let's see, let's respond to this call. And he puts the offering plate and he says, let's respond. And by one by one, people come out. I wanted to go to the next slide, Pastor B, just to show. <coughs> Is it okay if I, like, no disrespect by calling, calling him Pastor no, B. Sure right? in, a, in a span, now, if you look at the number of 4,000, I don't know if that's a big number or a small number. In South Africa, that is a big number. <laughs> that is 60,000 rand in four, in, sorry, in 30 minutes time. God speaks to that, to, into the hearts of people and they respond. Isn't he Jehovah Jireh? Yeah. Isn't he the God that we sing about and read about when we say that he is uh, the, the God who owns the castle on a thousand hills? Right. And I love that when, when we speak about God, when, you know, when we speak about God as Jehovah Rapha and he brings healing, praise the Lord. When we see that happening, you know, one of the reasons why many people are leaving, the, when we did research on when people, how many people leave the church, is when they see that theology, what you preach and what is, what is lived out doesn't correspond. When we speak about the grace of God and, and the pastor speaks about the unmerited favor of God and the, we're using all these beauty, beautiful things and we see that there's so much hatred even in the church. We have a problem. Who wants to be part of that? But when, when we speak about Jehovah Jireh and about God owning, he, 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 he has the, all the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns. And when we see that, in action and when people that is suffering and, and have poverty and they're coming out and four thousand dollars are being being made in half an hour then I say yeah he is Jehovah Jireh Amen. I can trust him Amen. how many of us yeah way maker miracle worker Amen. promise keeper right. yes and when we see that I say this God is a God that I want to follow because what he says, he does. When we speak about the grace of God, we can use those fancy words of the unmerited favor of God. But we don't see it in action. When we speak about the fact that God is love, or, or this is a holy God, and we don't see it in our actions, I cannot attract people into the church. I cannot make a Christ-like disciple if I cannot see God in me and working through me. And when I saw, when we saw... You know, it was funny when people came up after counting and they're just shaking their life. Like, I'm thinking, there's going to be a problem here. I think this is terrible news. But he of little faith, I don't know, somebody said to me at a camp that we were now uh, up in Pennsylvania. Why are we surprised when we see healing in our church? Amen. Why are we surprised when God provides? Why are we surprised? Because this is the God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Nothing is impossible with Him. Yes. I don't want to start preaching, my friends, otherwise you won't go home. <laughs> I want to close there. Uh, I've got a lot of things that I want to, <laughs> want to say. Um, but uh, I, I thank God. And, and this morning I wanted to preach, but I also wanted to give you a feedback <laughs> on a God who is not intimidated by anything, by any COVID, by anything. He's not intimidated by anything. This God can be followed and he wants to be followed. He wants to have a relationship with us. Shelly, if you can, um, I've, I've got too many things, but uh, I, I need to make sure I respect your time as well. All right, just as we wrap up this morning, we just want to give you some of our dreams on the Africa South field. Um, at this field conference that, uh, that Ronald was speaking about, um, I think, Pastor Darrell, if you go 
to slide 32. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have we have made some we have uh, we have some visions and some um, some dreams on the Africa South field, and some of those are that we would like to increase our World Evangelism Fund giving by 50% here in the Church of the Nazarene. Your own local church gives to the World Evangelism Fund. And the World Evangelism Fund is the money that we use to, to work as missionaries in the Church of the Nazarene. We're very blessed to be with this organization. Some organizations, people have to raise 100% of their funding, and we always have to raise their bread and butter. And in the Church of the Nazarene, we don't have to raise our bread and butter. We, we, get a, we do get a salary, and that comes from the World Evangelism Fund. And um, uh, in Africa, our churches also need to contribute to the World Evangelism Fund. So we need to increase that giving by 50%. We would like, uh, on the Africa Southfield, uh, I said we had 25 districts. We would like to um, add six new districts in the next five years. So that's bringing us up to 31 districts on the Africa Southfield. We want to continue to enroll pastors in um, continuous training, but also in Nazarene Theological College. As Ronald said, we, we want to plant 300 new churches. We need pastors to pastor those churches. So we want to, uh, we want to bring in uh, pastors that can do that, increase our outreach to children and youth, because that's the future of the church. And also uh, to continue preaching holiness and helping people to, to, um, uh, to attain that holiness identity that we have um, in Christ. And on the next slide, um, if you want to stay in touch with us, we do have prayer cards uh, with us. Um, we do we have them? Did we forget them? We did have them. But I was thinking we might have forgotten them. We do have prayer cards. They have our email addresses on them. You can keep in touch with us that way. But also through the Nazarene.org website, you can access our missionary profile there, as well as all of the Nazarene missionaries' profiles. If you're curious who's working in Central America or who's working in Asia or whatever, you can access those missionary profiles. I know your church has a Lynx family. You can access their profile on the Nazarene.org website. And on the next slide, some of you might be thinking, you know, God has been speaking to me. Um, maybe some of you are entering into retirement and you have a bit of a gap uh, in time maybe and you're thinking, or, or maybe you're transitioning between high school and college and you're thinking, um, you know, the Lord has been speaking to my heart and I'm thinking I might want to volunteer for three months or six months somewhere in the world. The Nazarene websites, these are, these are ones where you can go to. There's opportunities.nazarene.org. There's serve.nazarene.org. That's where you can, uh, you can come in and you can sign up to, to pursue some of these things that maybe you want to do. Or maybe you just want to come on a two week work and witness trip. You don't have to go with your district. You could sign up to go with another district. You would meet at an at you would meet at your location. Let's say you're flying here from Indiana and you want to go with the with the Colorado district to Timbuktu. You can meet them in Timbuktu and help them build a church in Timbuktu. You don't have to go with your local district. Um, so you can go to the Work and Witness website um, as well, uh, which is Work and Witness. Uh, admin.nazarene.org. So there's all kinds of ways that you can get involved and um, and you can reach out to the world around you as well. And I, just to do the next slide, Pastor Darrell. So we went on a, our family went on a safari last year in September. And um, you can you can see, you can, guys can drive in your car, okay, not like just out in the streets, but you can go to a national park, drive in your car. This lion just kind of walked next to our vehicle for like 20 minutes. This was a lioness. She was on the hunt. And, um, and if you know lions, the, the females do the hunting. The men sit around and wait for the food to arrive. Amen. <laughs> and so Ronald took this picture, and he could have like reached out and petted the lion. Not that you would. They're... they're quite mangy, I have to tell you. <laughs> You've got flies and stuff on it, so you wouldn't want to actually reach out and touch them. But, um, so this might whet your appetite to come to Africa. Maybe you want to see lions in the wild. I don't know. Maybe this is your thing. So, um, but anyway, that was, we just threw that picture in just in case you're starting to think, oh, that could be maybe fun, but maybe you want to see some real live wild animals. And you can, you can actually do that in our national parks in, uh, in South Africa. And I'm just going to let Ronald close it off quickly. Hey, Michelle, it was nice this morning. Because at another church, he said uh, that lioness that you just saw loves dark meat. That's what she said. I mean, I'm exposing you again. Dark meat. 
But um, I, I want to take some time, if you just want to go to the last line uh, and say thank you uh, to you. I mean, for years and years, we've been coming to back to this church um, and it's refreshing to see a lot of new faces. That means that uh, God is bringing a lot of new people and uh, not that the old people that's been there for long mustn't come back, but it's good to see new faces. And uh, I want to say thank you. If you see your language up there, thank you. Gracias. Uh, gracias. Is it right? um, thank you. Thank uh, you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, when I was in Arkansas, this is my, my thank you. Thank you, y'all. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for making my family uh, feel at home. Here in the Washington Church of the Daniel. Thank you, Pastor Darrell, for having invited us. God bless you. Amen. It is always an honor. Um, I, I love the fact that I got to hear him live instead of on Facebook um, as a rerun. Because uh, I know the, the, the flocks of deuces or twos or threes of you that, do, that look at the rerun of this service, right? You guys can shake your head at home. I'll believe you're doing it. It's faith. Um, but we are going to take a love offering. I'm going to ask Miss Lisa if she can go gather what's in the plates right now. I'm going to ask Brother John and David if they can come forward with the plates. We are going to take a love offering. Um, if you want to make a check, make the check out to Washington Church of the Nazarene, and we will cut them one single check. Um, that's just how it is here. Uh, we're going. Everything, every penny is going to go to their ministry. We're not keeping a single cent. Um, we don't do this often. You notice... We don't pass the plates here. If you attend our church, I know we've got somebody. It is so funny. The weirdest things happen when, when somebody comes for the first time. I usually I might preach a, a sermon that, man, if this is the first sermon I've got to hear from this guy, I'm not coming back. And amazingly, they come back. And then I've got some new faces in the house, and here we are passing the plate. Normally, we do not pass the plate. I want you guys to know that. Uh, we leave the plates in the back. You're going to you know, leave, and take them, leave your offering as you see fit. But this is a special occasion. We are going to pass these plates simply for the Miller family and their ministry. Every single penny goes to benefit the kingdom. You can see that they're working. Um, I love this family. I pray for them often. I'm going to ask my brother Don to come up and play something behind me because Miss Charlene has got kids. Unless you want to go tag Miss Charlene out with the kids, Don. He's running right up here. <laughs> but let's pray over this offering. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity we have to give a little bit of what, what we have. Again, we, I said this earlier, we may not have much, but what we have is yours, Father. And we know that you multiply and you, you use to further your kingdom. So we ask that you take every penny, nickel, dime, quarter, dollar, or check, and you multiply it for the good use of your kingdom. Help us and give us opportunities to be able to fix our own spiritual shoes. To help us lead and fix other people's spiritual shoes. Give us those opportunities as they're happening overseas. But bless this family. Keep them safe and keep them well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those of you joining online, thank you so much. Know that I love you. Know that I'm praying for you. Until next week, we will see you tonight for Bible study.